uh, if you worked in a department store and a young lady came up and said, how much is that man? He said, twenty dollars. He said, I'll take two. Let's say it's a good Christian. He said, if you go down the street, you get the same land for ten bucks. He wouldn't be working there very long. So when they tell you that your government likes you, they're working for you, you wouldn't outsource to another country. You understand? If you outsource jobs and production to other countries, it means all they're concerned with is the bottom line, profit. And that, that's very disadvantageous to people. The profit system actually does design things to wear out and break down. Because that's the way you keep in business. <coughs> Every year you've got to buy <coughs> new airplanes because the old become obsolete. So war has always been good business. A friend of mine, when you're drafted into the army or you join the army to protect your country, you put your life up for the country. So they should conscript all the war industries so no one makes a buck out of war, then it's real. On the same basis of pay of soldiers, but if you make millions selling aircraft to the army, he sells machine guns, she sells submarines, it's not honest. Now I knew a guy named Alexander P. D. Seversky, who owns the first the aircraft company. He said during World War II that we should that the government should buy long range bombers to knock out the power projects of Germany. If you knock out the dams and the power projects, but if you shoot soldiers out of the field, they can keep producing munitions and bombers and airplanes. Do you understand? Even war is corrupt. It's corrupt as an operation. A friend of mine flew airplanes in World War I, and he said he flew over Krupp munition works eight times with orders not to bomb. He didn't understand that. He was a pilot to defend the United States. But after the war, a magazine called Fortune Magazine read an article called Arms and the Men. Probably never heard of it. And in that magazine, they said that DuPont has holdings in IJ Farm. That's why it wasn't bombing. So war is really not to bring democracy to other countries. It's about resources and exploitation and removal of the resources. National loyalty is really a form of stupidity. All people need clean air, clean water, arable land, and a relevant education. That means no businessmen, no advertising, no investment bankers. Relevant education means how to re restore the environment and the damage reached. Not to, you know, I don't know if I told some of you this, but the United States Army about 45 years ago dumped 65 tons of nerve gas off the coast of Miami near the Gulf Street. How can you love the country and do things like that? How can you care about people and bomb their cities? Well, fire would press a button and wipe out cities. The reason people do that, they get a medal. They get an X on the fuselage of how many planes you shot down. I used to work for Ernst Uder, Uder. He became the head, one of the top brass under the Nazis. Well, I worked for him at Roosevelt Field. And I said, how did you shoot down 70 airplanes? And he said to me, I would fly above aerial combat and watch the rookies that couldn't handle planes well and knock them off. Now, what kind of a person is that? He's a war hero, great man. Eddie Rickenbacker, the same. They're bums and stupid people brought up by an arrogant society that doesn't give a shit about anyone else but these established institutions. So I'm trying to tell you something. We must join together with all nations, take care of the earth together and one another. If you, when you think of the cost of World War II, I'm not just talking about the military cost. I'm talking about taking care of veterans after the war for years. And then all the cities bombed out, the museums and art. You know, you remember England and Germany flattened out. Take that cost, you know what that could have done? It could have housed everyone on earth, brand new housing. 
new art centers, music centers, cultural centers, housing, parks. Soldiers should be trained as problem solvers, not killers. When you train people to be killers, obviously soldiers don't know what the hell they're doing because they think they're defending their country. They're building hatred for the next 20 years. When you bomb the Arab world and flatten it out, you're not doing any good. So years ago, when I was proposing this society, I said to myself, John, how are you going to change everybody in the world? They all think differently. Some people have 10 wives, you know, in some nations. It's all so very different. How are you going to change them? That's what thinking is, talking to yourself. If I say, I'll see you Saturday, he says, I'll take the kids there, and then he I can't see you Saturday. So thinking is nothing magic. It's, it's what you've been exposed to and asking questions. So I said to myself, how are you going to change all these people? I said, I don't know. That's the first thing you have to say. I don't know. You think we'll ever get to Mars? Nah, not in a thousand years. That's your opinion. Just say, I don't know enough about aeronautics, space travel, or the conditions on Mars to give him an answer. We don't talk that way. When we see a new airplane without wings, we say it doesn't have wings, it'll never fly. The question is, how do you propose to lift off the ground without wings? I'm a layman, not technical. If you do that, there's no argument. If you give everybody a right to their own opinion, which is we're brought up to believe that that's the right thing. If everybody has a right to their own opinion, if you live across the street from me, and I see 10 guys coming out of your apartment, I can have all kinds of opinions. You can be a language instructor, an art instructor, but if you give everybody a right to their own opinion, you damage communication. Just when you ask them, do you think we'll ever get to Mars? They would say, it's not my field, I know nothing about rocketry. I can't answer that. That's the way people talk in the future. They don't say, it'll never work. Scientists in the past used to write books on why man can fly. And the right brothers <coughs> never read those books, so they built a flying machine. They were bicycle mechanics. Now, the right brothers really didn't just do that. In the early days in France, some guy designed a set of wings that stuck out three feet on each side. And he jumped off the Eiffel Tower, and he died. And he died. And his brother-in-law wrote, Make wings larger next time. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to know. Nobody ever does anything wrong. They use whatever knowledge they have, and their decisions sometimes don't work. Now, let's talk about that. When this guy's brother-in-law wrote, make wings larger next time, somebody made larger wings, but he didn't jump off the top of the island. No. He jumped off a lower region. And he flew for a while, both wings like that. And somebody, a fisherman, with a lot of rope, says, you got to brace your wings so they don't go like that. Oh, thank you. So men build upon other men. There's no, this is going to be hard to accept. Man, this includes me, cannot think or reason. All that bullshit. If you're not exposed, if, if, ask him about it. If you ask him, what do you want? You can have anything. He says, well, I like a strong igloo. He's not going to ask for uh, prefabricated building with photoelectric cells on it. You can't ask for that because you've never been exposed to it. Then there's another bullshit word which I've never heard a lot of you love. Now let me tell you what's the matter with it. Is there anybody here that's perfectly satisfied with everything you've ever done? Of course not. So sometimes you like yourself, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you like yourself very much, sometimes you dislike yourself. So when you get married, the same thing. Sometimes you love your husband and wife very much. Sometimes a little less. Sometimes not at all. You fall out. So love is a fluctuating thing. It's not a fixed thing. Do you understand that? Okay. So if you're brought up with twisted values, like a guy named Albert Fish, which the nation at that time, U.S., believed he ate 45 children, and the public wanted to tear him to pieces. So they were brought up that way. But a doctor named Workham, a psychiatrist, said, I want to find out what made him that way so we can avoid those conditions in the future. That's much better. When your car veers to the right, you don't kick it and beat it up. Either your tire pressure's uneven or something's wrong with the steering column, you try to 